glossy. What do we make for that? Oh, the skull thing. Let's do that. Bust a top coat. I already saved that one. All right, let's make a new one. Here it is. So we need a studio. Let's grab a psych. Let's look at the lighting here. Remember, you can always see what the lighting is like by looking at reflections and shadows. We have a pretty good shadow below, which means it's mostly overhead lighting. A lot of, a lot of lighting above. Mostly kind of flat overhead lighting. So I'm going to grab a, an overhead softbox. I'm going to move this there. Oh, what did, what did I do? Oh, content browser. Okay, overhead softbox. Wa-bam. Move it down. And now let's just take let's take one of those primitives again because I think those will look nice with clay. I mean, they're made to sculpt and all that stuff. So, base mesh. Let's uh let's do the stegosaurus again. We we're playing with playing with this guy yesterday. Always a hit. Always a hit, folks. Want to shrink them? All right, let's talk about some. Uh, let's talk about some. Uh, some. Uh, some. Uh, adding some geometry, so it's a little more rounded. And now we got overhead lighting. We got colors. We need some colors. I like this green and blue combo. So uh, I'm gonna go to our psych material, and I'm gonna pick this green. Kind of a lighter, a little bit more faded green. And uh, I'm gonna create a new material, and I'm gonna throw that on our. Stego Saris. And um, this is going to be probably all reflectance for this material. So I'm going to go in and just turn off our color channel. I could have made this from scratch, but that was, uh, I guess it's okay. So first of all, base. It's all about that base. Get some blue going. All right, let's get interactive render region. Let's see what this is looking like. First of all, not too shadowy, right? But we're, we're going somewhere. That was pretty quick. Got a little, little shadow going on there. Um, let's add some render settings. Let's use light kit low and let's add this GI area light to our softbox. That'll clean things up just a little bit. What that does is it just focuses more um, samples on lights coming from things that you check that turn that checkbox on. Okay, so that is. <clears throat> that's okay. However, because this psych material is using a color channel, we're really losing the ability to kind of bounce light around. Now we could fake that. Let's try faking it first before we turn on the GI button. And for that, we're just going to use a global light. GSG light kit. Global light. So that's going to fill in some of those gaps there. Let's go ahead and turn that up. And oh, a little bit more. Oh, so the global light, I see. The global light's not gonna work because we're using reflectance 100%. So we're gonna go back to what I wanted to do, which was get that green color on the studio. So let's turn on GI just for now. You're gonna see it get much brighter and that light is gonna bounce off of the floor and into our clay now, into our blue. And it will even more as we add more uh, details to it. So I'm going to go to GI Draft just so it renders really fast for everybody. Not bad. A little bit of a quality hit, but I think we're okay. Okay, so good place to start. We're good there. How do we get that clay going? Well, we bring that texture in, and we could do it to the base color, base coat. But what I think I'm going to do is add a gloss coat. I'm going to shift-click, add a gloss coat using top coat. That's going to give us some glossiness. And we're going to blur this glossiness and turn down the Fresnel so it's even more blurry. We're going to make this light blue to match our, our clay. And again, there we go. So now we're getting a little more clay kind of shininess, even less Fresnel. I want this to really shine. Now we got it. Okay, now we're going to go into our bumps and we have a um clay which maybe we renamed it i never remember there it is clay 
Okay, so what this is going to do is add kind of some fake thumbprints and stuff all over this model. And in fact, I'm going to kind of go down and maybe even zoom in a little bit just so we could see a little bit more high detail of what this looks like. So that's nice. Let's compare it to where we are. That's where we want to be. So ours is way too bumpy. So we could bump depth down. There we go. A lot more subtle. Much better. Maybe shrink it a little bit. Now you just got to get the thumbprints kind of like thumbprint size on your on your model here. There you go. A little bit. Got a little bit going. Okay, so part of this is that the light need, may, might need a little bit more light. So one thing we could do is just kind of grab a sphere just to make sure our texture is right before we start tweaking everything. Because remember, you know, you got you to gotta tweak textures with your... Um, with your lighting. They kind of go hand in hand. There's no textures without lighting. There's no lighting without textures. So let's get this set up here. Got a nice little clay kind of going on. And this, there is a really nice heavy shadow on here. And their green is way more, <laughs> way more blue than mine. <laughs> it's bugging me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a little bit, a little bit more subtle there. Now we could cheat a little, and I do this all the time. Sometimes an overhead, perfect overhead softbox, just too overhead. So you grab it, you move it back, and you just tilt it. And that's just gonna give a little bit more, a little bit more on the front, it's gonna give you a little bit more to reflect. And I just turned on our quality here so we can see this a little bit easier. But that's the basic clay. So let's make sure this looks right before we start tweaking it for the other model. So let me make sure we're good here with shadows. I want to get a nice big zoom in here. In fact, I'm going to choose a camera, try to make it a habit to always grab a camera and be in control of your scene. Do not rely on just default cameras. What camera are you going to choose? What lens are you going to choose? Okay, so I think that texture, let's just select it for top coat, can be a little bit on the gloss, a little bit more blurry, so less shiny, more clay-like. There we go. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. Lovely. Lovely. So that's draft. So let's just go up to GI medium. We're at a thousand by a thousand pixels. And let's just see what we're looking like. Let's see how close we are. Let's see colors. Let's see all that stuff while we're rendering. Let's go. Let's go say hi. Okay. Already looks like Play-Doh. Yep. That's what the clay uh, was there for. Does the green studio S S act like a green screen? could do that I would just use an alpha channel uh, instead of using any colors um, yep professor RGB got it yep yep awesome Eric yes you can ask questions I got to go here in the next few minutes uh, but ask some questions I'm gonna go over uh, what we talked about at the beginning as well um, you just asked a question Jake Uh oh that's funny now that's funny Eric's asking about this render right here uh, and this is a little bit dark but we could build this really fast in fact we're gonna do this as soon as this uh, clay render is done here we're gonna build this um, this look, looks like a low poly kind of wall with a little light going on up top perfect question Eric Paul zero double zero I will answer that question in just a moment we're gonna make sure this is looking okay and uh, this um, this thumbprint could be shrunk down quite a bit, I would say. Um, that's one thing I would do is just take this texture down quite a bit. Uh, so I would grab our bump scale, really knock it down again, maybe twice. But you're just, you know, you're playing with it until it looks, until it looks close. So I'm going to reduce our res just so we could get a rough idea. Get it? Rough idea. Ah! <laughs> top coat joke and already we could see it's close it just needs to be scaled down 
and I, so I think we're good. So what we could do is remove that. We could bring back our um, Stegosaurus, which at this point, I, I think we could just kind of scale to meet the size of that, of this thing. So let's see what that looks like. And you know what? This might be a little bit more kind of like fun if he's not totally sideways. It's got a little, got a little fun going on there. And because we're rendering, we're doing all this hundreds of other things, you know, it might take a little second here, but that's not bad. What I would do is go in and add all those little details the way that, um, the way that this seven isn't perfect. It's got like little weird edges on it. So it, I would sculpt and do all those kind of things. There's also a little bit more of a shiny um, color to it. So maybe I was actually wrong on that. Maybe I reduce the blur amounts on this gloss and just, rem just shrink the bump depth down and really make this a little bit more subtle and make it a little bit more shiny. So let's go ahead and do that. We could just stop this render because I think we get the gist there. That's going to give us a little bit more power to, to tweak here. So let's, yep, see it get a little shinier right there. Also see how it's a little bit off-white color. So maybe this is not quite blue as much as it's like an amber blue. So this might be so much I have to dial back yeah that's probably more of a color correction thing but we could always tweak that as well okay so let's get in on this detail make sure that's looking clay like so I'm just gonna turn up our resolution here that's not bad you got that shininess going on whoops moved it less bump depth now these things when you start talking about things that are one and two percent stuff like that you could really you know kind of go tweaking like crazy and now i just i'm, lo I'm losing some of our shadows like i kind of want a little bit of ambient occlusion as well in here to get some of these shadows filled in like around there let's see if it fills in and it does okay so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to pull back on our render settings just a bit just so just so we're seeing a result and then we'll turn them up for our final render. So let's go ahead and do that. Get two machines going and then we're going to tackle the question here from Eric Paul. Ultimate Wolf. Did I never get to yours? Thought I did. Swoop. Oh, the music visualizer, Ultimate Wolf. I'm gonna get back to you, man. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with that in uh, X Particles. We're not gonna have time to tackle that today. I can do it live and just kind of play with it. Um, so maybe we could do that next time. I literally put it on our, on my bookmark so we could do that. And if it turns out any good, I will put it on stream. I'll put it on um, put it on let 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 you see it. Um. Buju. Yeah, I did X particle collider to a null group. Keep copying the tag to all the objects like a dummy. Um, <clears throat> uh, I didn't solve that one either yesterday. I, I did the same thing. Uh, connect object will always solve it. Connect object does exactly that, which is take, um, uh, take geometry that is parametric and then turn it into one chunk of geometry. So connect object solves so many problems. Uh, I almost always just try that. That's like, that's like restarting the computer. Like, did you try the connect object? Um, <clears throat> I just go to it all the time for things like that. So my, that's my guess. Um, of course I, I'm saying that now, which I should have thought about yesterday, but give, give the connect object a try. See how that is. Okay. That was one model though. That was, three spheres i try to do it with three spheres for that snow falling thing 
this is looking pretty good. I think there's a lot of tweaking to do on that texture. It's a little bit more scaly lizardy right now, but I think with a little subsurface scattering or a little bit more blur on that blue, I think we got pretty close to that clay look. Um, that's how I would approach it. And uh, there you go. There is uh, clay, clay dino. Plan to use other renders.